Director of Student Success for the CSO International Program. I'm so excited to be going live tonight to talk about the amazing week we've had so far with SciTech Institute and the Footprint Foundation and all of our special guests on the Zoom in on Science um, phone calls with the Chief Science Officers. So I just wanted to get on tonight and let you know that we were so excited to not only share the access to the movie, the story of plastic, but also engage with our CSOs to talk to STEM professionals and about plastic pollution and what they can do and how they can take action, not only at their schools, but in their states and even their countries. We have students from not only Kenya and Kuwait and Mexico, but students all across the United States that really want to make an impact. As chief science officers, there's six through 12th graders that are elected to serve as STEM ambassadors on their campus. They're required to do what we call an action plan. And this action plan could be something small like teach a younger grade about STEM, right? Identifying the letters, science, technology, engineering, or math. Or they could also start a club, right? Maybe they wanna start a recycling club. Some students have gone as far as hosting a STEM night or creating a career fair to talk about the opportunities that are engaging in STEM and how it's become a global um, acronym that people are starting to recognize in the educational world. So this week, our CSOs, our chief science officers around the world have been participating in these phone calls and, or Zoom calls, I should say, right? Digitally connecting with STEM professionals. Hi, Lee, welcome. I think I need to broadcast and make a watch live party. I don't know how, to, I'm, I'm learning all these cool tools, but, uh, you know, right here from my kitchen table, but um, <laughs> they have the opportunity to really interact with professionals. So Lee is on the call, right? He, he Peter Piper is across Arizona. We really were talking about how can we get Peter Piper and their STEM education curriculum for, about pizza and soda to interact with the CSOs who are trying to do something on their campus. Everybody loves pizza and all of our CSOs have to do something with STEM. So really working together to um, invite students to do something that makes an impact. And I'm a huge proponent of fail fast, fail forward, fail often, because not everything's going to work, especially when you're a sixth grader, or maybe even a junior in high school, and you come up against some challenges, especially adults, right? So my role as the director of student success is to help them find it and remove the barriers that often get in the way of truly making an impact. So I'm gonna pause for a second and go try to start a watch party and see if anybody else can join us. Thank you so much, Lee, for joining. And I will go on another tab here. Learn all these devices is totally um, engaged. People in Microsoft Teams, so all sorts of cool stuff that has been happening, and it's exciting to partner with Footprint Foundation and be able to you know connect students with real life STEM professionals. Last night we talked to Eric Miller from PADT and you know just his background and what he's been able to do as ceo of this company and um his connections with the tech council arizona technology council foundation um arizona technology council he's the on the board there as well so let's see we can start another watch party i believe i am live here yes so let's click that and <laughs> we drop it. Let's see. All right. Almost to another party. We'll drop it on Side Tech Festival. If you're online, say hi. Okay, we'll post there. And I think we can do one more 
Oh, I should probably share it on my homepage, right? <laughs> um, if you have a question and um, post them in, I don't even know if it's called a chat box, but on the feed. So um, Dr. Christine Figener is on and she wants to know what kind of learning opportunity did Earth Day and the story of plastic provide. The film was incredible, especially the trailer was such a nice teaser for the students to get engaged to talk about plastic and what is happening around the world. So for example, we are not in Arizona, for example, we have over 300 students and they don't necessarily engage with the ocean impact because we're, you know, in the desert. But we do have um, opportunity to discuss about, you know, recycling, and what can happen as trash moves from one place to another and how much single use plastic impacts the whole earth. And so focusing on Earth Day and focusing on plastic pollution and then actually being able to talk to individuals like um, Dr. Katie Coleman, a retired NASA astronaut who is a polymer chemist and Dr. Figener, who, who is a marine conservation um, biologist and working with the sea turtles you as you know um, the impact of her videos that went viral and changing the plastic straw movement also um charlie rolski last night being able to talk about his research on whale poop and also his soon um his research he's doing on the impact of plastic particles in the human body the movie itself gave them an opportunity to watch something and feel the emotion because maybe they've never been to manila and maybe they've never been to a place where trash is on the shores or on the sides of the road. And I believe that really opened their eyes to the impact that they make personally. And really thinking, you know, what can I do at my school? So Charlie challenged them last night to really think about taking an inventory. What's happening on your campus? Are you using plastic utensils in the cafeteria? Are you um, using, are there different vending machines on campus that students are utilizing plastic bottles? What is happening? And then figuring out if your campus is not necessarily going to support a recycling program, although some schools, our CSO schools have been very successful. The um, Emilio and Esteban have been very um, good at starting their recycling club, but a challenge came when they had new administration and it was canceled. So how do we promote them to continue on their plan when they run into challenges is something that also gave them the opportunity to discuss with key influential people who have run into nose often, especially as researchers, right? Where does the funding come? How do we save the sea turtles? How do we protect the nesting um, turtles and the eggs, even if there is, um, a specific law in place, right? Dr. Wigner re re reiterated that they have these laws, but they might not be enforced. So how do we actually protect those sea turtles? And I really think it's interesting for them to have a varied point of view and be able to engage with real professionals in the STEM community to talk about the day in the life. Because maybe they want to soon become a marine conservation biologist, or we talk to um, it's a variety of different people that are doing amazing things that we haven't necessarily heard about. And they are all doing incredible things. As their action plans, we're trying to support them with blogs and video posts and celebrate each individual CSO and the action plan that maybe they did together as a group, but their role in it, right? Really making a difference highlighting how STEM is important, especially now. We have a few students who have been able to um, support with 3D printing, making face shields, or we have one student in Georgia, Aditya, who is on the International Leadership Council, who was able to create an app or a device for the app. I see this is me with my lack of tech skills, that when you bring your hand to your face, it alerts you that you're about to touch your face again. So to stop doing that. Um, I just cannot shout, an out, shout out enough about how incredible our chief science officers are. 
their leaders. We also have an alumni network that is beginning to form after five years of the program. We're, we're just closing our fifth year. That some of these students have graduated and, you know, really started to take on their classes to become, you know, scientists or some of them don't even want to just be scientists, right? We have some that want to be dancers and understand how that steam, right? How that integrates with the science and technology of the human body. And so understanding that. Um, I think it's pretty important that we just continue to support the students, help them understand that you're gonna you're gonna hear no. You're also gonna fail. And it's okay, right? Find a new door. Find a new professional that's willing to support you. Or if they didn't like the first plan, revise it, make a new one. So a lot of them do come up with their own action plans at the Leadership Training Institute when a student is first elected or selected to attend to represent either their entire school or sometimes they re represent the entire district. They, we do brainstorming sessions for their action plans. What would you like to do? Would you like to teach others? Would you like to communicate with the community and change policy? Would you like to start a club? Start a club is very popular, but also um, hosting an event where people can learn about STEM opportunities in their community. We have a lot of students that love teaching others, so they would go to different grade levels, uh, especially I always encourage them to go to kindergartners because kindergarten uh, students just absolutely think everything is incredible. If it fizzes, oozes, changes color, or they get to um, hold it in their hands. So we have one demonstration that we always talk about, which is called Elephant's Toothpaste. I'm sure um, those of you in the STEM world have watched Miss America who did the Elephant's Toothpaste chemical reaction on stage. And uh, it's pretty neat to see that on that level, the students have done that activity and then they have done it in a way that they could have students you know, younger students do it with them and talk about the reaction, but also make it any, making it interesting and talking about do elephants actually brush their teeth and thinking about, you know, at a zoo, how do you take care of an elephant properly? If they don't brush their teeth in the wild, what is important when they're kept in the captivity? So it really sparks some interesting conversations. Like I said, six through 12th graders that really want to make an impact in their class in their grade level, on their entire campus. We have some students that are um, representing Girl Scout troops or churches or boys and girls clubs. Um, it doesn't, as long as you're, you're making an impact on, you know, more than just yourself, being a CSO is an opportunity to engage others. It's also an opportunity for them to find a network of other students that are like them which I think is a challenge in middle school. I taught sixth grade math um, and some students that flat out said, I don't like math, right? It was my goal to help them find somebody else who did like math that they wanted to be friends with so that they could find a reason to be comfortable with math. And that's part of the challenge, right? Most of us want to be liked and most of us want to do well so if you can find somebody who is like you, who's willing to support you and encourage you and push you a little bit past your boundaries, which I really like to do. And CSO Marissa brought that up, that I do push them to uncomfortable situations, kind of like uh, Dr. Figger's sea turtle analogy of looking on the beach and her first time trying to find sea turtles. A leader, uh, a coach, uh, a champion, right? Somebody who wants you to find success is going to put you a little bit out of your comfort zone, but bring you back and tell you how, give you the feedback and the style that makes you understand that it's okay to fail and it's okay to absolutely try again. Um, so again, fail fast, fail forward, and fail often. We have a really cool phrase that um, is our slogan. It's CSOs don't just hope it happens, make it happen. And so one of the things they wanted to do was talk about Earth Day opportunities. What could we do? What kind of competition? I don't like competition. But how about we call it a challenge? What type of challenge could we host at the international level to get students engaged in awareness of class what's around them? So some of the students from the International Leadership Council came up with 
creating an Earth Day sculpture out of the plastics that are found in your house. We don't want you to, you know, break from social distancing. We don't want you to go purposely buy any plastic. We want you to go through, this sounds gross, we want you to go through your trash or your recycling bin because we definitely want you to get creative. And we're going to put this challenge out to you right now that we want you to send us or post your pictures of an Earth Day sculpture. What could you make out of and repurpose your plastic in your house and or you could go pick up trash around your community? How could you repurpose it and make it into a sculpture? We were had the opportunity at the International Summit to go to um, the Smithsonian Museums and they had a variety of um, plastic sculptures and one of them looked like the coral reef now i've scuba dived no i have not i like i have only snorkeled i'm afraid of scuba diving but there are scuba dives so i have snorkeled in places like fiji belize thailand all over the world and the coral is absolutely beautiful and one of the things we did last year was watch the documentary chasing coral and the impact that the temperature change is having really stunned the students. So when we were able to see this plastic sculpture that looked like the real coral with all the different colors of the different pieces of plastic, it kind of opened their eyes that this was fake and that if we didn't do something about making an impact on what we're doing around the world, not just in the United States, not just in you know a specific country, but all over the world. We have so many countries that live next to the ocean or next to a water source, and that's their livelihood. If the plastic is in the water and it's getting into our food streams, what is happening not only to us as humans, but as we think about the entire ecosystem. So we as a global network of these young dynamic leaders, right? These chief science officers, and then all of the adults standing with me, we have Footprint Foundation, SciTech Institute, the STEM Learning Ecosystems Community, so many people that really want to make a difference in the world through STEM education, then let's get them to do something, right? Let's tell them, let's talk to the students, let's hear their voice. Because what has happened in 20 years, right? When I was a child, think of uh, it's more than, more than that, probably 35 years ago, right? What has changed is going to have to come from those students, those sixth through 12th graders right now in five years, 10 years, even 20 years are going to be the innovators that really support the changes that are necessary. I don't know if we can stop the pollution, right? But really make a dramatic impact on the pollution of plastic around the world. So if you can, you know, use a recyclable or uh, reusable straw or actually use the utensils in your kitchen cabinet. And I'm sorry, but you have to do the dishes. And if that's your chore at your house, do it, right? And then thinking about the types of fabrics and thinking about um, the different materials that we use and throw away so often, it's gonna take all of us. And I think this young program, and I say five years is young because that's kindergarten, right? So imagine if the CSO program is able to go to other parts of the world and interact with people all around the STEM community to actually activate, not just grassroots, but really grow some, some roots in substantial changes, not only in public policy, but also in the way we educate our students right? The classrooms have changed. All of you are online right now and the world is totally flipped upside down. I used to be a classroom teacher and I could not imagine what the classroom teachers are going through because this is the time of the year you get to celebrate and say, look what we were able to accomplish. Let's show the data, you know, what you actually learned this year. And it's hard. And I totally commend all of my friends who are still teaching to this day for what you're doing and trying to keep those students engaged, especially with the digital divide. What can we as the whole world, what can we do to really make an impact, not only the communities that have plastic piled up on the beaches, 
but what can we do even in our 10 mile radius? All of us can make a difference. When you go to the grocery store after COVID and you're allowed to use a reusable bag, let's use it. And maybe we encourage each other and say, thank you for using a reusable bag instead of, ugh, they're not using a reusable bag because the judgment is not going to encourage others. We have to coach each other and say, I noticed you use a reusable bag today. Thank you. You're really helping save the environment, save our world, save our drinking water. And I think maybe we talk to big corporations, right? We need some very difficult conversations to happen. What are they doing? And what can we do instead? I remember during hurricane, um, after the hurricane hit Puerto Rico, a lot of companies, instead of using plastic, they created the water in cans. I don't know if that's the, the one solution, but it's definitely something we can consider, right? Let's, let's move into something that's easier to recycle and repurpose and reuse. Again, I am not a chemist. I am not even technically a scientist. I am leading this group of dynamic individuals who want to make a difference in the world through STEM. And it takes all the scientists, it takes technology, it takes the engineers, which I love to design, create, and build. It takes the understanding of math. It takes math. There are so many students that are not comfortable with talking about math. We have to talk about it. We have to have these difficult conversations in school and with the big corporations because eventually all students, if they become a, you know, a thriving member of society, they're going to work somewhere and everywhere, all of the organizations, even if it's at the grocery store bagging groceries, they could become the person that says, would you like to use a reusable bag? Did you bring your reusable bag so I could pack your groceries? Would you like help out? I think in the old days we used paper bags and I don't know if anybody still uses paper bags. I know I see them at the grocery store, but they're tucked underneath and it's kind of like, because they're more expensive probably produce. But I loved paper bags when I'd get home. We used to use, we used to make our book covers and then decorate them at school um, out of paper bags. Wow, that's really showing my age, but that's okay. I think so much of us, so many of us could provide some really neat suggestions about how do we make an impact. And, you know, myself, I, when I was deployed in Iraq and Afghanistan, we drank from one liter plastic bottles because the drinking water was unsafe. We're not gonna get around that. There are a lot of countries in the world that have unsafe drinking water. And if we want to change the clean water situation, there need to be pumps installed and there need to be access to clean drinking water because I believe that's a human right. But if we continue to pollute it with plastic, we're defeating the purpose. So I hope you have a chance to watch the story of plastic. It's it's eye-opening. It's it tugs at your heartstrings because if you've never traveled the world, and I've been blessed to have the opportunity to travel to a, a variety of different countries, and I had the chance to spend time in India over Christmas and teach students STEM with CSO Prisha. And it's just incredible how the laws in certain countries or the regulations of trash or the single use opportunities are so very different. And I think until we get every, I know we're not gonna necessarily get everybody on the same page, we can at least get in the same book and talk about what's happening with the pollution and you know the impact of plastic. The way to do it is to watch documentaries like the story of plastic to participate or support programs like the Chief Science Officers, to support foundations like Footprint. If they're making sustainable um, food packaging, right, that it, it could change a lot of things that instead of going and getting takeout in that plastic uh, container, you know, maybe, maybe we really think about what we do on a daily basis. And we've had a chance, I hope you've had a chance to really slow down during this situation. COVID-19 really has encouraged everybody to take a breath. And I hope you have really stopped to think about what's important to you, what's important to your family, 
and what is important about the earth because I tell you what, I love my neighbors so much. They're a retired couple. And every time I go out to walk my new dog, because I got a new dog, his name's Roscoe. And I'm so blessed to have the companionship. But every day, my neighbor mentions, I can hear the birds. And that's an incredible thought uh, from you know a gentleman reaching close to 70, that the hustle and the bustle has really slowed down. And people have had to take a minute to really think about in this small space, right? Maybe your house is not as big as other people's houses, or maybe you have more people in your space than you wish, but really stopping to think about what's important is, is really going to help us come together as an entire global network of people wanting to make a difference. And maybe you want to make a difference on a certain aspect. So that's your passion. So how do we get everybody to do something that improves the situation that we currently are in? And a huge shout out again to all of those companies, a lot of our sponsors that are doing big things with like KDP was printing face shield. And you know, we have different corporations that are creating the ventilator systems and the um, respirators. Like it's incredible that companies, these huge corporations are really taking it up a notch. And, you know, we have Viasat who's really addressing the broadband situation here in Arizona and other companies like AT&T or Iron Mountain talking about, you know, getting devices in the hands of students. Everybody really can make a difference if we stop and think about what's right for the entire global community. And some would argue um, it's not necessarily plastic pollution, but I would behoove you to watch the movie and really think about your use and how you can make an impact today and what you can change in your daily lifestyle, even when we get back to normal and consider yourself part of this group and consider yourself part of the solution. And to my chief science officers, don't just hope it happens, make it happen. I'm gonna hop onto our Q&A with the producer from the movie and I have posted the link, so I hope you can join us. We would love to see you on. So thank you so much for watching my video. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me, kelly at chiefscienceofficers.org. Thank you so much. This week has been incredible. I'm truly honored, ah, I'm gonna get choked up, to be the director of student success for such an incredible program. Thank you.